In the last videos, we've been looking at the end life of different types of stars, and we were looking at what happens if you have a very massive star. And so if a stellar remnant um, had a mass of greater than the Chandra Sekhar limit, which is 1.4 solar masses, then you end up with something very special. Right? You get a supernova explosion, and then the result is either a neutron star or a black hole. And we talked about how neutron stars are stable due to neutron degeneracy pressure, which is a quantum mechanical phenomena that says that you know you can't have um, two neutrons in the same quantum state. But in any case, let's let's look a little bit more about neutron stars. So if we look at this, then neutron stars, well, they are super dense. That's true. Now, how dense do we mean? Well, the mass. Remember, we were looking before. The mass is going to be around. Well, maybe it's the lower end, which is. 1.4 solar masses, all the way up to around maybe 3, a little bit more than 3 solar masses. It's estimated that that could be the mass of a neutron star. So the neutron star's mass is between 1.4 and maybe 3 times the mass of our Sun at the moment. And yet, the size of a neutron star is actually quite small. It's going to be on the order of kilometers, so maybe it's something like 12 kilometers. So when we look at density, density is all about a mass divided by a volume. Well, it turns out then that these things are incredibly dense because this, you know, imagine a star that's only about 12 kilometers wide and yet it has maybe three times the mass of the sun all squished into the size of only about 12 kilometers. I mean, this could be seen as um, around the size of Manhattan, for example, in New York City. Um, so this is taking a whole big amount of mass and squishing it really, really small. So it's incredibly dense. Now, one of my students had pointed out, uh, this is a couple years ago, he had pointed this out, and I thought it was kind of interesting. He looked up the neutron star entry in Wikipedia. I have mixed feelings about Wikipedia. I mean, sometimes you can find some correct things, but other things are actually quite wrong. I think it all depends on who wrote the article and how many people have been looking at it and updating it and editing it. But in this case, this here has been here for a while, where they talk about neutron stars. And then they say this, they say the density is approximately equivalent to the mass of a Boeing 747 compressed to the size of a grain of sand, or the human population condensed to the size of a sugar cube. Now I thought this sugar cube and human population, I thought that was an interesting way to look at it. So uh, with my own students, we've actually gone into these details, and I wanted to show that to you. So I'm just going to put this away. So we're going to take a look then at this question. So what if we have a sugar cube, and I looked up, the sugar cube is supposed to have a volume of around 2 times 10 to the minus 6 square meters, right? I mean, a sugar cube isn't that big. This is a tiny little thing, you know, it's a little cube of sugar that you might want to drop into your coffee. There it is, it's very, very small. And if that cube had a density of a neutron star, now this right here is one of these sort of estimated or predicted densities of a neutron star. So they're thought to have around 3 times 10 to the 17 kilograms for every 1 meter cubed. So the question, first of all, I think is, well, what would be the mass that you would need in order to have some sugar cube that has a density of a neutron star, what would that mass be equivalent to? And then after that we're going to see how many people is that. Well the very first step is probably just to do exactly this here. Let's look at the units right here for density and let's try to find the mass. So the mass will be equal to, well, look at this now, um, density is equal to a mass divided by volume. And if you want the mass then, mass is therefore density times volume. So that means then all I have to do is say mass equals the density, so that's 3 times 10 to the 17, and that'll be kilograms for every meter cubed, and I multiply that by the volume, which in this case is 2 times 10 to the minus 6 meters cubed. You can also see that we've done this right because the meters cubed on the top will cancel out the meters cubed on the bottom. All I have to do is multiply these two numbers, and I get the mass of that particular uh, sugar cube that you would need to have if it had the same density as a neutron star. The reason we're doing this is 
if we want to look at how many people could fit, you know, could be squished into a sugar cube if it was a de uh, neutron star, well, it first helps to find the mass. So I'm going to get out my trusty calculator here, and I'm just going to multiply these two numbers. So uh, 3 times 10 to the power of 17. Okay, I'll just press to enter. And do that times 2 times 10 to the minus 6. And I get, okay, 6 times 10 to the 11. That's my answer here. So I get 6 times 10 to the 11 kilograms. That's the answer. That's the mass needed. So that means if you took 6 times 10 to the 11, which, uh, let's see, that would be, that's 600 billion kilograms. It's extremely massive. Okay, so that's a lot of mass. And if you squished that much mass into the size of a sugar cube, that would give you a density that is the same as a neutron star. <clears throat> so imagine you took, you know, a sugar cube worth of a neutron star. So let's say you had your fancy um, scoop, and you could just, you know, be sitting on a neutron star, pick up a little scoop of it that's the size of a sh sugar cube. It would have a mass of 600 billion kilograms which is, well, very, very high. Now, how many people is this equivalent to? We can calculate that as well, because if we just take this then, well, let's assume a person has a mass. I mean, it all depends on what you assume a mass of a person is. But the mass of a person, let's say it's around 70 kilograms. Let's just assume it's that. If then we assume that that's the case, well then we just have to take our number of 6 times 10 to the 11 and divide it by 70. And we get an answer then of, let's see, what would this be? 8.6, So that's 8.6 billion people. So we could conclude then that that's equivalent. 8.6 billion people could fit or would have to be sort of squished. I mean, it sounds a bit macabre here. Could fit inside the sugar cube. Now, I don't mean could fit. I mean, you know, you'd have to, you'd have to squish them. So I don't mean that we're actually fitting them physically. We'd have to squish all these people. So imagine 8.6 billion people. And you took all of them and just sort of crushed them down. So they're all totally dead. And you've crushed them down so much, you crush all those people down to the size of a sugar cube. That tells you an idea of what the density of uh, one of these neutron stars is.